As the state botanist, it's the job of Welby Smith to inventory and catalog Minnesota's wild plants. He also studies plants that are rare or endangered and those that will need special management to remain viable into the future. There are about 2,000 species of plants growing wild in Minnesota. Uh, they, they vary from prairie species to boreal forest species, marsh species, uh, underwater species. And a number of surprising things grow here, things that people would not expect. We have uh, strange things, Kentucky coffee trees and, uh, and, and, and things that very exotic sounding and looking things. But also um, there's eight species of native oak trees that grow in Minnesota. And there's three species of native elms and 20 species of willows. And that surprises people. Uh, people tend to just see trees and, and not fully appreciate the um, full extent of the diversity we have. You, you can be in a forest, uh, walk, take a nice brisk 20 minute walk to a forest and not realize you probably walk by maybe as many as 30 or 40 different species of trees. Although the modern botanist has many tools to aid in their work, the best tool may be their own two feet. Exploring prairies, marshes, and forests on foot, searching out-of-the-way places for previously undiscovered plants and familiar places for overlooked species, all provide clues to understanding our natural history and lead to new discoveries that will help define the future. This must be done by someone who knows each plant on site, a skill not taught in universities. It is a skill that only comes with decades of experience. Since 1979, Welby has contributed more than 30,000 herbarium specimens to an ever-growing repository of scientific knowledge. When a botanist finds a specimen out in the field that he wants to preserve for study later, he will collect it, press it, and dry it. That's how herbarium specimens are made. And this is a plant press, and it's designed to hold specimens flat between blotter paper while they're being dried. Once a specimen is dried, it is labeled, so the information about where and when it was collected and who collected it can be preserved and kept with the specimen so that people even a hundred years in the future will know exactly where the specimen came from. There are more than 600,000 specimens in the University of Minnesota Herbarium, a division of the Bell Museum of Natural History, a collection that represents the product of countless hours of fieldwork by botanists over the last 150 years. Some species are no longer found in the state, such as the chinkapin oak. This is a specimen of chinkapin oak, known to botanists as Quercus muhlenbergii. Now what's fascinating about this specimen is it was collected from a stand of native trees growing in the southeastern corner of the state in 1899. Now botanists have gone back to the site several times since and have not been able to find the trees. It's suspected that they're gone, that they simply uh, did not survive to the present day. And what makes this specimen critical is that without this, we would not know that the trees were ever there. This is the only record ever preserved, and it's been looked at by botanists for the last hundred years, and they've been able to um, accept this as positive confirmation. We know there are new discoveries to make out there. We know that if we go out in the woods, we're going to find them. If we look closely, look carefully, we're going to find them, and it, it never fails to excite me. Just the anticipation of all the, all the new things we're going to learn, uh, new, new species to be found, new things to learn about species we thought we knew really well. Uh, and every year we're surprised. It's a, constant, it's a constant surprise, very exciting, very exhilarating. It inspires a lot of people, probably me more than anyone else, but it is very inspiring, and it's what keeps me uh, coming to work every day. Always new things to find.